Welcome to Connecticut eHealth Podcast, educating, conversing, and connecting for better health. The Connecticut eHealth Podcast is a space where we get together with local and national experts, key stakeholders, and other individuals in the space of eHealth to discuss health information in Connecticut and around the country. This podcast is brought to you from the Yukon Health Interoperability, Innovation, and Learning Lab, where our mission is to promote the optimal adoption and use of eHealth by providing education and engaging in conversation with leaders to create connections for better health. So let's sit back and get connected. Hello, my name is Tom Agresta. I'm a family physician and a clinical informaticist at the University of Connecticut Medical School. I'll be your host for today's episode of the Connecticut eHealth Podcast. Today's guest is Sumit Sajnani, newly appointed Health Information Technology Officer, or HITO, who works for the Office of Health Strategy in Connecticut and is the chair of Connie's Board of Directors. Connie is our state's health information exchange. Previously, Sumit was the CIO at Tech Solutions Intel, but he focused on cloud-based solutions for public and private sectors. He also served at the state level as the executive project manager of the Connecticut Department of Corrections and helped oversee their expansions of their IT systems as well as the adoption of an electronic health record and an offender management system. So welcome to our show today, Sumit. Thank you for having me, Tom. It's really great to be here. And I really have had an opportunity to hear your other podcasts. And I think the work that you're doing to inform Connecticut residents and others related to the HIE and other aspects of health IT are extremely important. So I thank you for inviting me and others uh, for this forum. Excellent. I'm very glad that you were able to join us today. So Sumit, tell us a little bit about yourself and what your role is as the HITO or Health Information Technology Officer for Connecticut. Yeah, so I've been a long-term resident of the state of Connecticut now for over 30 years. In fact, I came here for my undergrad, fell in love with the state so much that decided to build my family here and my career here and just never left. Uh, I have been in technology for over 25 years and basically started my career as an intern in IT, working at a large local insurance carrier. And I have spent about half of my IT career in health IT, and the other half has included doing management consulting, having my own IT consulting firm, as well as working as an executive contractor for the state of Connecticut. So as you mentioned in my intro, I did about 12 or 13 years at Connecticut Department of Correction, which was extremely productive, which sort of lends into why I took this role and and how my experience in uh, state of Connecticut and my experience in health IT and management consulting sort of ties together uh, with this role. So that's briefly my background and happy to uh, speak more to it. Excellent. And and we're very glad you joined us as the HITO in, in Connecticut as as Many people have already, you know, discussed with me, they really feel that your background, your interest and your excitement to, to join this role has really been very beneficial and will continue to be so. I know you also asked me about what the HITO does, and I missed that part of the question. So in terms of the Health Information Technology Officer, it's basically a statutorily appointed position at the state of Connecticut and among a variety of different technical initiatives. I also co-chair the State Health Information Technology Advisory Council, also known as HITECH. I also am the chair of the HIE CONI board, which is a board of directors that oversees the official state HIE, as well as I sit on the board for the APCD, which is the All-Payer Claims Database Council. It's a multifaceted, exciting role, but the way I would describe it for the listeners that we have today it basically is to bring investments, technology, processes, data to help improve the health outcomes, health equity of the residents of Connecticut. So we, I deeply care about equal access and high quality of health care. So I think this role tremendously plays a, a role in impacting those things and improving those things in a meaningful way for the residents of Connecticut. Excellent. So that gives me the, the motivation, it sounds like, for why you 
chose to take on this role. I'm, I'm sure that you were with the challenges that exist and the varied aspects of what you're doing, that it's created some, some interesting opportunities for you. Oh, it absolutely has. And, and, you know, speaking of motivation, when I first heard about this role through my network, I wasn't sure I wanted to even apply for this because I hadn't yet understood what the mission of the agency was and what impact this role could make. And as I got to know more about OHS and what it does, I almost describe it as small but mighty, with a very small number of people, all of the different things that it impacts is just very interesting to me. And then when you start looking at what the person in this role can do towards moving the needle on that impact, it's just bringing a lot of resources together across the state to make that happen. So a lot of challenges in terms of availability of you know, resources, availability of bringing different parts of healthcare delivery system together, availability of technology. So there are a lot of things that I would love to talk about in, in terms of challenges that I see and opportunities that I see. And in no small part, the HIE, uh, I, I think it plays a very critical role in improving our healthcare outcomes and getting data to the right places uh, for providers to make decisions at the point of care. So I think we have very interesting opportunities and challenges in front of us. Excellent. And I completely agree with you. Can, can you talk a little bit about some of the most important lessons that you bring from your prior experience to this role? So just some key things that you've learned in your prior experience that you feel will really help you in, in this role. And by, by the way, for the listeners, assume it works directly for the Office of Health Strategy, which is OHS. That's the acronym. We're going to throw around some acronyms here and we'll try to define them as we do so. Yeah, Tom, that's a great question. And, you know, there, when you've been around working for 25 years, you learn a lot. And I'll give you two that I think are very relevant. I might throw a third one in. I think the most important thing, and this ties into the motivation for taking the role, it ties into what it is that we're trying to do. We oftentimes can't see the forest for the trees, right? So we sometimes think that the role is technology, the role is implementing tools, the role is connecting data, but the role really is improving lives, impacting lives from a health outcome perspective, from a social risk perspective. So I think my number one lesson is I remind my team pretty regularly that we have to connect the dots between all of the work that we do day in and day out to the overall mission of what OHS is doing and how it is that we're improving the lives of the residents of Connecticut. And I think we have all of these opportunities across different agencies, even state of Connecticut, because we have multiple different agencies that provide support for social services, for DEMAS, for public health, and so on. So When you can really put all of that in context of what it is at the end of the day that we're trying to accomplish, as it's very important to do the step-by-step technology implementation or data implementation, but what we're really trying to do is bring about that kind of change. So keeping that meaningful in mind is important. The second thing I would say is we have to collaborate. So I learned very early on that when you're trying to do critical big things, you don't do them by yourselves. It takes a village, if I could borrow that phrase. We have a lot of hardworking people throughout the healthcare system in Connecticut and beyond that are putting in a lot of effort every single day to try and improve the health outcomes in Connecticut and beyond. This isn't to go out and say, somehow we or I know something better. This is to say we need to collaborate across agencies, across public-private investments, across everybody that's providing and is part of the healthcare system and work collectively to understand what the pain points are, how can we work together, what can we improve and do things differently. So I take this role, the motivation behind this role, the purpose behind this role, and tie it to working collaboratively across all of the stakeholders to bring about that change. And and the third one I would tell in which uh, put in here related to 
uh, a lesson learned also deals with measuring what we do. So, you know, when we talk about we have a mission, we talk about we're going to collaborate, but are we bringing about the change that we intended to? And again, I don't talk about change simply in terms of did the data make it from one provider to another? I talk about change in terms of where at the point of care did we improve decision making? So when providers are working really hard, they have a lot of data in front of them. Did we make it easier for them to do the right kind of decision making? Was that an improvement than what they previously had? Same way when we talk about patients and we say, can they see their records and are they an engaged partner in their decision making and their health care? Are we getting them all of the information they need so they can see uh, their medical records completely? So I, I would say those are the three key lessons I've learned over my career that uh, would be critical in this role. Excellent. I think those are, are you know, very salient to where, where we need to head things. Given that you've got a fresh set of eyes and you've really joined this process recently, how would you describe what you see as the progress with our health information exchange at the state level? So I think when, when we look at where we are, we have to look at where we came from. You know, we had a late start in Connecticut in terms of an HIE. So if we compare ourselves to other states, we have mature HIEs in other states that have been around for a few years. Uh, the Connecticut HIE went into production or online in May of 2021. I think it's made tremendous progress in terms of since going live, getting stood up, being active. And rightfully so, the focus initially really has been about connecting providers. It's about getting providers signed up. It's making sure that the data and the transactions, particularly the uh, ADT transact the admission discharge and transfer transactions are making it uh, from one provider to another. But I think the opportunity is tremendous in front of us. So I think we've made great progress so far. The promise of the HIE is tremendous in front of us. And I think if we maintain the momentum we have so far, I think we're in a good place uh, to achieve that promise that it's set out to deliver. I, and I agree with you. <clears throat> I think that there's uh, a tremendous difference uh, from where we were one year ago today to now, despite the pandemic. And that's that's uh, created its own challenges, but perhaps it's made our focus a bit more clear about why we need to accomplish these things. Talking about sort of thinking you know, forward, I know that one of the things that you have to do uh, in your role is kind of shepherd forward a state level plan for health IT. And I, and I know that a five-year plan is in the making and being um, evaluated and, and passed around right now. What do, you, what do you have to say to our listeners about what's in that plan and about how it can impact and improve that healthcare outcomes that you described? Yeah, I would report to the listeners that I am very excited about the five-year plan. Uh, the five-year plan has taken uh, a very wide cast of an environmental scan and participants that have provided us feedback in their day-to-day -day challenges dealing with healthcare, healthcare IT. Uh, and this environmental scan has involved day-to-day -day residents from Connecticut. It's involved major providers of all different sizes, health systems, it's involved payers, it's involved advocates. So this has been a very wide net that's been cast to really understand what the opportunities are. And once that was done, we developed a bold plan for Connecticut to really make a huge difference moving forward. Uh, what this plan tries to do is really guide the multi-stakeholder decision-making process and support collaboration between public and private sectors. It also helps align investments and policies. So one of the things that OHS is responsible for doing is making policy suggestions to legislatures on where we should be moving forward, how some of the dollars that the state is planning to spend, and these are precious dollars that need to be invested appropriately, how do we align those dollars to the policy, to the direction that we want to move to? So after looking at this broad environmental scan and getting several um, key experts involved in the process, 
we've come up with broad guidelines and principles that drive the health IT plan. Uh, and this includes things such as getting health community organizations involved and into the fold of the HIE, promote the healthcare delivery system to develop more efficiencies, uh, get resources in a person-centered system, uh, a collaborative that we're talking about where we take different social services agencies within the state of Connecticut and tie them together in terms of their system. So even the work that uh, people are doing within a agencies and the providers in the public space, in the private space that are doing, can collaborate together by through an HIE. So there are a lot of great opportunities in the five-year plan that I'm very excited about. And again, tying back to the overall mission and how it impacts people on a day-to-day -day basis, I will tell you a brief story that I just learned about. And this is a real story of a Connecticut family that we came across as part of doing some interagency work. So obviously for confidentiality purposes, I can't tell you the names and the details, but I will tell you the gist of uh, what happened with this family. So this family had a teenage boy and a grandmother in her 70s, and they were receiving social services on a variety of different uh, platforms, such as the child who the grandmother was a guardian of uh, was involved with DSS on certain social services, such as SNAP or with Medicaid. Uh, the child was involved with DCF just from a care perspective, being a teenage child. And then we found out that there had been some public safety incidents, maybe close to eight or nine in a three-month period. Now, all of these not being connected together, right, not connecting the dots because they're different state agencies caused a lot of issues. We didn't know what was going on from a public safety perspective. We didn't necessarily know that DCF needed to get further involved, or we didn't know how the different DSS programs were going to impact the family, and if there were different support things that we could bring to the family. Now, we were fortunate enough where the grandmother reached out to the state and said, you know what, these are all the different services that I've been receiving. I am okay with you guys collaborating together to solve this situation, which was extremely helpful. But I tell you this to say, these aren't just matters of if we connect the data, we save some money and we get some efficiency out of it. Yes, those things are true. But at the end of the day, when we connect the dots and we bring in social risks and we bring in community-based organizations and we bring in different state agencies that are providing social services into a connected system, we are saving people's lives and we're improving people's day-to-day -day outcomes of, of how people are living in the state of Connecticut. So these are real stories. These are real impacts that people deal with day in and day out. And I think that's what this five-year plan tries to focus on. Excellent story. It could actually have been a story that is connected to patients and, and grandmothers that I take care of in my own clinical practice that have had similar challenges placed in front of them. So it's, it's very salient that oftentimes what we're reliant on is the advocate in the family to kind of bring all the data together. I heard it recently described as sneaker net, you know, where the, it takes a person to bring together the pieces of information and put it in front of you. Uh, and they've got to walk between the agencies to do that. And I think what we've got the opportunity to do is to actually create a lot more collaboration across different agencies. And so you gave us a great uh, example of, of what we could do if we actually connect the dots in a, in a substantial way. And I know our HIE is planning on trying to incorporate referrals and, and e-consults back and forth between uh, community agencies and clinical providers. And I think that's going to be a wonderful opportunity. Can you think of any other things that would be collaborations that you might see that happen either through the HIE or through other roles that you have as, as HITO? Yeah, I think there are endless opportunities for collaboration, right? This is a continuous process improvement journey. I don't view this as a destination to say, hey, somehow if in the next 12 months or 18 months we arrive somewhere, then we don't need to collaborate more. I view this as we need to find every opportunity across the spectrum to find things that we need to connect together. So 
lot of the other HIAs, as I mentioned earlier, that have been in production longer, particularly the one I would point out to our HIAs in California, which have now converted to becoming CIEs, community information exchanges, because what they're doing is bringing together social needs data with all of the different community organizations into the HIE. So maintaining the confidentiality aspect of it, where HIPAA plays into uh, the confidentiality and privacy, the state laws play into confidentiality and privacy. And as is Connie has its own very critical policies dealing with confidentiality and privacy. So it's very important to maintain that as Connecticut residents would demand as, as we are shepherds of that data. But it is important also to share the appropriate relevant data that would bring benefits to knowing for the providers on what else is going on within your social realm. Because we've long now understood that your health isn't just limited to when you go see your provider for a particular illness, but it's what is driving up to that. So I think the social needs data now for a long time has been an evidence-based item that a number of us, a number of people in healthcare have been talking about. And I think we have an opportunity to continue to develop in that. So I think as our HIE is maturing and as our state agencies are connecting, I think bringing the community-based organizations and collaborating with them, bringing in more behavioral health providers. So we currently have a number of non-behavioral health providers and non-community-based organizations that are electronic health records. And what we need to do is provide the appropriate support for the community-based organizations and for behavioral health providers that may not currently have an electronic record to provide that kind of support so we can get them connected and collaborating with the HIE, sharing information with the HIE in a bi-directional way. So I think there are many, many opportunities that we can look at for collaboration. And I see this as an ongoing effort for every single day, every single month for quality improvement and process improvement. I think you've just laid out the next five years for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we'll take a short break to hear about our sponsor, Connie, the Connecticut Health Information Exchange. We want to take this opportunity to thank Connie, Connecticut's official health information exchange. Connie was established in 2019 to oversee and provide services to support the exchange of health data in the state of Connecticut. Connie is an independent and not-for-profit organization. To learn more about Connie, please visit ConnieCT.org or go to the show notes from today's episode. So Suman, as we return to our conversation, you've, you've named a number of really important things that where collaboration and communication that the HIE can provide will add, I think, outcomes-based value. Can you talk a little bit about how you're going to measure that value and maybe a little bit about what the APCD or the All-Payer Claims Database is and how that might come into play in terms of evaluating value as well? Yeah, I think value is extremely important. And this sort of ties back to one of the lessons learned question that you had asked, where I said, it's very important to measure, because if you don't exactly know what you're measuring, then you can't do the continuous improvement. And, and this question sort of reminds me of a TikTok that I was watching yesterday, which is put up by a doctor. It is satirical, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it talks about a patient that's come into the provider complaining about abdominal pain, and the patient tells the provider that I, was, I got some tests done at another hospital system, and the provider tells the nurse, hey, can you look up the information from the other hospital system, and they're searching in their EHR, they look at the media tab, and they go, it's not in the media tab, then they look at the document tab, they're like, nope, not in the document tab, and then somebody says, did you look at the care everywhere section? And they're like, yeah, but can't seem to find it there either. And eventually they decide to fill out this release of information form and have the patient sign it and go get the records from another place. Now, this is obviously a little exaggerated because we have multiple HIEs in the state even before Connie came along. And Connie certainly is the official statewide HIE that attempts to connect all providers and is also working across different providers of EHR. So 
it's a different spectrum. But when you look at this type of pain point, the measurement that we have to do is, are we improving the day-to-day -day actions that providers are taking at the point of care? Are they getting the data at the right place? Is it easy to access? So goes back to even collaboration with everybody in the healthcare delivery system, because we want to hear from the providers on how it is that you're using the HIE. Is the data making it into where you need to see the patient and you need to make the appropriate decisions? So I think that is an amazing value proposition for us to be continuously working with people who are consumers, stakeholders of this data, and not limit ourselves to just saying, we got the data over to the other EHR and we're sort of done in terms of our function. So even though the mandate of the HIE is to share data and connect providers, I view it as a value proposition to say, how exactly is that data being used? And are we seeing an improvement in terms of better decision-making? In terms of the APCD, that is a tremendous all-payer claims database tool where all of the payers by statute in Connecticut, all of the fully insured payers are required to submit all of the claims data into this system. And this is used for tremendous aggregation, trend analysis, cost analysis, care analysis, time analysis. And what you're able to do is, as we move more and more towards a value-based payment system, which I think has been something that has been discussed long-term, uh, we're not there quite yet. And in some ways, it might be the feds that are more driving that, maybe from a Medicaid perspective, that then the rest of the world sort of follows behind. We have this capability of looking at what services are available in Connecticut, what people are paying for those services, and how the claims are getting processed. So this is a tremendous aggregate level tool that we use for a lot of research. We even, for the right purposes, through a proper evaluation and a committee evaluation, can release this data for research purposes. And it's aggregate data, so I don't want your listeners to get concerned that somehow their individual claim information is being looked at or personal identified information on the claims being looked at. We look at data at an aggregate level for a trend analysis perspective. So I just wanted to make sure the, the listeners were aware of that. Excellent. And, and I think that as we share data more effectively, I think one of the impacts that we can have is a reduction in unnecessary services, duplicative services. And I suspect that the, the APCD may be a place where we could actually evaluate whether that's occurring or not. Absolutely. It, it's a, a critical, so all of the different aspects that we would typically look at in, in terms of duplication, efficiency, cost, type of care can all be evaluated at an aggregate level using this system. So it, it's a valuable resource. We even get Medicaid data. Uh, sent into that. So we in Connecticut right now, as of 2020, end of 2021, had close to 26.2% of the population on Medicaid. So that is a substantial portion of the population and that data is feeding into the APCD. So I think we have an opportunity, both in terms of the commercial payers and in terms of Medicaid to look at uh, a variety of this information uh, and look at the trend analysis. Excellent. And I and I hope to see that that trend analysis is moving in the right direction, um, that we're getting better quality and, and getting it at a fair cost, I would say. So as you kind of look forward, um, I'm going to ask you to think about the next three years and think about markers of success. If you could name a few really clear markers of success, things that you would be really excited to see and measure, what, what do you think they would be? Well, I think the biggest one is going to be strategies for widespread use and sustainability economy, right? So we have an opportunity to look at other states and see what they have done in terms of the HIE life cycle. And unfortunately, some of the states that had started in HIE ended up shutting it down. And now that we're coming behind that, you have models you can look at that have been tremendously successful, thriving, like I mentioned, the California model, 
and they've even done it at a county level and they've now managed to expand their HIE into a CIE. At the same time, you look at other states that weren't as successful. I think one of the key markers is going to be how do we make sure Connie is sustainable? How do we make sure Connie is bringing the value to the residents? And how do we make sure its use is widespread? Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we started in May of 2021 in terms of going live. There has been tremendous ramp up of providers connected to Connie. We have a statutory mandate that requires providers to, depending on which category you fit in, to either connect by May of 2022 or May of 2023. So labs, for example, connect by May of 2022, and that's defined in the statute very clearly. We want to make sure that a key success metric is going to be successfully meeting and exceeding the statutory requirement that we have through May of 2023. The statute also requires us to have a patient access for their complete medical record, which is a very critical component. And this is a pain point today, right? I'm, I'm sure our listeners would be able to relate to this. If you see providers across different systems, right? So if you go to different uh, hospital systems or your providers are not in the same necessary network using the same EHR, you have to log into multiple different provider-based EHRs to see your segmented medical record. You don't get to go in to a single place and see all your prescriptions, go into a single place, see all your medical history. So I think the mandate that Connie has that would be a critical measure is, are we able to provide an access to patients for everybody that wants to have this access, have that in a single place where they can see their complete medical record? I think another important measure would also be, how are we bringing in the health implementation systems and strategies to support the needs related to social determinants of health, right? So I talked earlier about we have plans within the five-year plan to bring those social determinants of health folded in, the community-based organizations folded in. So even though I realize that that is a five-year plan, but within three years, we should have some pilot programs. We should have an understanding of how we're supporting behavioral health providers and CVOs to at least become electronically able to have systems that can record patient data, record the service provided uh, to their stakeholders, and then share that appropriately. So that would be a critical marker for me. And then obviously some progress on the coordination of data and integration across state agencies. I think that is also an important marker. So these are all kinds of things that I would be very interested in measuring and moving towards uh, and, and delivering success on. Excellent. And, and what do you think that you might face as some of the major challenges? And, and do you have a, do you have a, a strategy that uh, you can pull out of your back pocket, hopefully, to help us move forward on them? Yeah, I think my biggest challenge, uh, if I was to segment that into two categories, right, related to the HIE, my biggest challenge is going to be sustainability. So we have a very aggressive time frame uh, that was put together by the people within the state on making sure that Connie is self-sustaining, which I think we've all understood that is the right goal. We don't want taxpayers paying for something for an extended period. We want Connie to deliver the value based on which it receives its payments uh, for delivering and cost cutting and efficiency and other kinds of things. So we have to make sure that we're marching towards that sustainability. We have to make sure that the sustainability plan as for the dates that it's supposed to meet those plans and markers gets met. So that is going to be an important challenge uh, for us to overcome and that we're showing everybody that's in the healthcare system the value that it's bringing and can have the appropriate fees associated with it. I think the second challenge also deals with, which is outside of Connie, this collaboration between state agencies, right? So there, there are multiple systems today that collect data from providers, from payers, and we're trying to build efficiency into that. But there are a lot of legislative things and data sharing consent things that we have to deal with and make sure that we're doing it in a way that fits within the allowed parameters of data sharing, that we have appropriate consent management, even in terms of 
the residents of Connecticut that they get the right information on what they're consenting to. So when you go to a provider today, for example, you sign off on a HIPAA form. Well, do you have an understanding of what that means, where it sends your data and how your data is being shared? So I think we wanna make sure that all of these policies around privacy and protecting individuals and families and their data is done right. And these are complicated things that we have to work through. Uh, so those are the two big buckets of challenges that I would put uh, the five-year plan implementation that, that we need to make sure that we're doing to be successful. Excellent. I think you do have some uh, major challenges, but I do think that they're, they're solvable. And they have been the challenges, I would say, since the first time that I got involved in health information exchange, which is now well over a decade ago. So as we close our podcast, can you share with us what would be your hopes or your uh, words of wisdom for our listeners to you know, get them excited about what's coming? Yeah, I would tell our listeners that we need to do more in terms of engaging with the residents of Connecticut. I have been a firm believer that you have to participate in your health care, in, in the care that you're receiving, in your data being shared, in your uh, active participant, in, in knowing that you're a key stakeholder in your own health. It isn't just the providers or the payers or others. You have a voice. And we are interested in your voice. So when we do environmental scans and we look for, we, like I said earlier, we had 600 plus Connecticut residents participate. They took time out of their, their busy lives to come speak with us. These are individuals in Connecticut who took the time to speak to us and tell us about their challenges and where they would like to go. We have taken that feedback very seriously. We have incorporated their voice into our five-year plan. And the things that we're trying to put out there are looking at that feedback and saying, how do we make the lives better for Connecticut residents every single day? So we would like to continue to hearing those voices. We would like to continue to provide that in an ongoing update of the five-year plan because that's supposed to be a living document. So any opportunity we have of hearing from Connecticut residents, we certainly welcome that. I, I think what we have put together is very exciting. I think it's something that people in Connecticut are going to be able to see and measure themselves. So when we talk about having access to your medical records, this is something that you can go when it's live and check out for yourself that you have access to see your medical history and your medication history and things like that. So these are not things that are abstract that are happening behind the scenes that people don't get to see. These are combination of things that happen behind the scenes in terms of data sharing to make healthcare outcomes better. But these are also things that directly impact Connecticut residents that they can go check out for themselves. So I'm very excited for the future and what is coming uh, for our residents and, and where that is, this is taking us. Excellent. And, and I share your excitement and I also hope one day in the not too distant future to be able to have my patients, uh, you know, log into and see information from multiple different places and share that with their family, those that they care about and want to have that information share with them, and to be able to collaborate with other clinicians in a more substantial way. And I really appreciate you spending time with us today, Sumit, to kind of share your your experience and your background, and and we really look forward to the to the continued work you'll do as the state's HITO or Health Information Te Technology Officer. Well, Tom, thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Hopefully it's been educational for Connecticut residents and we will continue to engage with you and others on this moving forward. So thank you again. And for our listeners, we will have information available on the website as to how to access the updated five-year plan for, for folks so that they can stay engaged. As Sumit has mentioned, it's really important that uh, we hear your voice and that you have access to the most up-to-date information. So thank you so much for listening and thank you, Sumit, for the conversation today. As always, wishing you the best of health. Your host, Tom Agresta. 